Many people believe that Photoshop is this incredibly complicated piece of software that's only to be used by the elite pros who have years and years of experience. Well, that's simply not true. And in this video, I'm going to show you that it can actually be quite easy to do some beautiful editing in Photoshop. Using a certain add-on tool will allow anyone from beginner to pro to achieve some pretty impressive results. And the best thing about it, this tool won't cost you a dime. Here we are in Photoshop and you can see the tool or plugin that I'm talking about about right here. This one is called Lumenzia Light, and there's another one that does the exact same thing called TK Loom Max. Lumenzia is made by a photographer named Greg Benz, and TK Loom Max is made by another photographer called Tony Kuiper. Both of these also offer a paid version, which just has a bit more options, and it costs about $30. But in this video, I'm just gonna cover the free version because I think it's already pretty powerful. And I'll leave a link to both of these in the description so you can go check them out if you want to. Now, what these plugins do is they make it incredibly easy to create luminosity masks. What are luminosity masks, you might ask yourself? Well, luminosity in simple terms means brightness, and a mask determines where a certain adjustment will be visible or where it won't be visible. So a luminosity mask is a mask based on the luminosity or brightness of an image. Now, this will become a lot more clear as I show you how the plugin works. So if you're a little bit confused right now, don't worry, it will become clear very soon. So I'm going to be using Lumenzia for this tutorial, but like I said, TK Loom Max is pretty much the same. And let's start with a quick overview of the Lumenzia interface. In the Lumenzia plugin, you can see there are buttons here going from D6 or Dark 6 to D5, D4, all the way to L4 or Lights 4, L5 and L6. And they are basically several previews of different brightness values of your image. So D for darks is going to show you the more darker areas of your image, going from not so dark, which would be D, to very dark areas, which would be D6. And L is for lights, where L6 would then be the brightest area of your image. The A, B, C, D, E options here are broader luminosity selections. And we can then turn this preview into a mask so where everything that is white would reveal or show any adjustments and anything that is black would conceal or hide any adjustments. But we can also turn this into a selection where everything that is white would be selected and everything that is black will not be selected. Let's just start editing this image and I promise you things will get a lot more clear. So this image here, one that I took in Austria some years ago, definitely has some good things going going for it. There's some nice atmosphere with the clouds, there's sunlight hitting those peaks. So overall a pretty nice image, but it is lacking a bit of contrast and dimensionality. So we're going to try and fix that by using these luminosity masks. The first thing I want to do is bring up the shadows a bit. So I'm going to select probably either a Darks 2 or Darks 3 mask. Darks 3 looks best I think because it doesn't include so much of the brightest areas of the image, but it still goes into those sort of mid-tones areas as well. And then I'm going to select the curves adjustment layer here and the plugin will create a curves adjustment layer with a darks 3 mask applied to it. So now every adjustment made in these curves will only be applied to these dark areas of my image. So I'll brighten that up a bit here and then bring down the curve a bit here just so we don't lose too much contrast. And I'll work a bit more on the contrast as we go along. So we're just slowly gonna build up the contrast, the color and the depth of this image, simply by adding different layers of luminosity masks. Next, let's make our highlights pop a little bit more because it just looks very flat up in the sky here. So I will choose one of these lights masks. The light one is including a bit too much of everything. L2 looks better but I think L3 here is what I'm after. And this time let's create a levels adjustment layer with that mask applied to it. So I just click on the levels icon here and Lumenzia creates the mask and levels adjustment layer for me. So it's actually very easy. And I'm going to increase the highlights quite a bit here. And you can tell we're lacking quite a bit of detail in the clouds here. So I'm gonna bring down the midtones to get some more detail back in those clouds. And let's just look at a before and after for this adjustment. So before, 
and after. And you can see that that's just brought back a lot of structure and detail in the sky. Now you might be thinking, well, why not do this with highlights or shadow sliders in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw? And the difference is with this method, you have a lot more flexibility and control as to where these highlights or shadows adjustments are being applied in your image. So the highlights and shadow sliders in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw are a very global adjustment, whereas these are very localized adjustments. And I'll show you some more examples later on in the video where this becomes a lot more clear as to why this is important. All right, one of the most interesting things about this image, I would say, is the light hitting those mountains here. So I really want to emphasize that. And I'm going to use a bit of a different approach for this. So I'm going to create a brightness adjustment layer and I can do that by clicking the icon in Lumenzia here. And I will increase the brightness quite a bit and also add some contrast. Now you can tell that that has just applied that to the entire image and that's not really what I want. I just wanted to apply it to those areas of the mountains that are catching the light. So I'm going to apply a fully black mask to that adjustment layer by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the mask button here in the Lumenzia plugin. As you can see, that has applied a black mask to that brightness adjustment layer, basically hiding that adjustment completely. Now I'm going to choose a luminosity selection in Lumenzia that targets those bright mountain peaks. So let's try L, now that's a bit too much. L2 looks pretty good. L3 is not enough, so I'll go with L2. And now instead of creating this mask, because I don't want to apply this brightness to all of this, I'm just going to hit select here. And what that's going to do is create a selection of those brighter areas. You can tell that there's an active selection because the SEL or select button here is green. And if I press command or control H, I can see the marching ants showing my active selection. Now I prefer to have these marching ants turned off because I feel like they get in the way visually. And you can make sure that Lumenzia always turns them off by going to this little burger menu here and then selecting hide marching ants. Okay, so now that we have this selection active, I will grab a white brush by hitting B, which activates the brush tool, and then making sure my foreground color is set to white. And I'm going to turn my flow down to about 50. And then I'm just going to brush over those parts of the mountain that I want to brighten up. And if I click on my mask here while holding Alt or Option, I can actually see a black and white presentation of where my adjustment is being applied. So white is where the adjustment is being applied and black is where it's not being applied. Now holding Alt or Option again and clicking the mask will go back to your normal view. And let me just show you a before and after. So before and after. So now we've only brightened up the brightest parts of those mountain peaks by using this luminosity plugin as a selection. So you can tell that this allows you to do some very specific and accurate adjustments in a very easy way. It of course takes a lot longer for me to explain this to you than actually doing it. So once you get a hang of it, it's really not a very difficult task. Okay, so before we start injecting some more color into this image to really get a beautiful finished result, let's quickly finish up our contrast adjustment because I feel like it's still looking a little bit too flat. So I'm going to make another darks selection, but this time I only want to work on the darkest darks of this image. So I'm going to go for something like a darks 5, I think. Yep, I think that will work fine. And then I'm going to select a brightness adjustment layer. And as we've already seen, Lumenzia creates the adjustment layer with the darks 5 mask applied to it. Now I want to create some more contrast, so I'm going to bring down the brightness of these darker areas and also add some contrast in there. Now you can tell that that's also darkened these trees at the bottom of the frame here because they were part of that darks 5 selection, but I actually don't want them to be that dark. So I can grab my brush by hitting the shortcut B on my keyboard and then I'm going to set my foreground color to black. I will make sure that my flow is again set at about 50 and then I'll brush over these trees at the bottom here and you can tell that that's removing some of the darkness from those trees because as I'm painting in this mask I'm concealing those adjustments over this area. Let me just switch to the black and white mask visual here by holding Alt or Option and clicking on the mask so you get a better idea of what I'm doing. Everything that is white is where 
where we have just applied this adjustment to, so where we have essentially darkened things down. That means that also down here where the trees are, that area is being darkened. So by painting over this area with a black brush, less of that darkening is being applied to it. And if I show you a before and after, you can see we've mostly darkened down those shadows on the mountains here, which adds a bit more contrast to those mountains. But it's not affecting those trees at the bottom that much. All right, now let's add a nice punch of color to this image because this was actually shot when the sun was setting, but I feel like those colors are not really coming through in the image. I'm going to show you two possible ways of doing this. The first one is going to be by selecting a lights mask because those sunset colors are naturally gonna be more present in the highlights. So an L2 mask looks pretty good. And then I'm going to create a color balance adjustment layer. You can find that right here. And now I can add a bit of yellow maybe a touch of magenta and some red as well because we're going for those sunset colors. So before and after, and you can tell that it's also being applied to these shadows areas here and I don't really want that. So with a black brush, I'm going to paint over that area a bit and that's gonna remove some of those colors being applied to that area. And it's that easy to add some nice sunset colors but very controlled and specifically to those areas where we want it to be. Another really cool way to, for example, make a color adjustment would be by using a smart filter. Because as you can see on the image right here, this is a smart layer. So I open this via Lightroom, then selecting photo, edit in and open as smart object in Photoshop. And the great thing about smart objects is that you can easily make adjustments to them with something like, for example, Camera Raw, which is like Lightroom, but inside of Photoshop. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to create a duplicate of my image and I'm gonna do that by right clicking and selecting new smart object via copy. And that's going to essentially copy this layer and make sure that this copy is also a smart object. And now if I go to filter and and select camera raw filter. You can see here I have all these adjustments that you might be familiar with from Lightroom. So for this example, I want to add some more sunset colors to my image. So I'm going to increase the temperature and add some magenta tint. And I'm also gonna add some color grading down here. So add some warm tones to the highlights. And I think that will do for this example. When I'm done, I just hit OK. And you can tell that right now we have this edit as a layer right here. But of course, I don't want these adjustments to be applied to the entire image the way it is right now. So I'm going to select a range of where I want these really warm tones to be applied to. So let's have a look at L2 or L3, and I think L3 is gonna work best. I will then click mask here, and that's going to apply this mask to my selected layer. So now if you have a look when I turn this off and on, only this part of the warm edited version is actually showing. And you can tell it's a bit too much in the corner here, so I can just take a black brush and brush some of that away. And if I still think it's a bit too much, I can even turn down the opacity of this layer, which will decrease the effect a bit. And that's the cool thing about luminosity masks. It allows you to make adjustments exactly where you want them and also how strong you want them to show. Okay, so let's look at a final before and after. So before any luminosity masking and after. So I hope this video was able to show you how easy it can be to achieve some pretty awesome edits in Photoshop. Now, if you're still left with any questions, feel free to write them down below in the comments and I will definitely try to help you out. However, if you're really feeling overwhelmed with editing in Photoshop or Lightroom, maybe consider signing up for one of my one-to-one -one coaching sessions that I'm offering on my website. That way we can focus exactly on what you wanna learn and dedicate one or two hours on improving your editing skills at the pace you feel comfortable with. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested to check that out. All right, that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.